thank the organizers of this TEDx conference, Karen Lundberg and the whole team of people who have been making this possible. I'd like to thank the school, the administrators, the teachers, the parents, of course the students, the staff for putting on this beautiful food and making sure that the building is safe, and all of you for coming. Thank you all very, very much. So, this is an interactive program. Please stand up, everybody. If you take nothing else from this presentation other than these two simple things, please take these home with you. Some days we need to find the energy inside us. It's a rough day. We need the juice. We need the energy to get through it. So we fire up. Breathe in together. And when you breathe out, breathe all the way out to your fingertips. Some days things are just moving too fast, or maybe it's a little frustrating, or something made us angry. So in that case, we cool down, we go the other direction, breathe in, and cool down. So we may not be able to control everything in the world, but we can, to a certain degree, change ourselves. Fire up. Or cool down. of possible solutions to a problem that is presented. An infinite number of techniques, so we're not going to have time for all that today. <laughs> so rather than show you the full canon of techniques, we'd rather share with you today a little bit about why we practice Aikido and why we bring it into schools. By way of background, the gentleman you see here is Morihai Ueshiba, the founder of Aikido, known to Aikidoists as O-sensei, or great teacher. characters here say Aikido, or the way of harmonious interaction with energy. And it's kind of odd, right? Here's this man, O-sensei, who gave to us a martial art of peace. And people at that point go, huh? Martial art? Peace. When I hear the word martial arts, I have this association of people fighting. And when I hear the word peace, I have this association of people getting along. So how can we take a situation that appears like it could degenerate into a fight and turn it into a harmonious one where people are coexisting and finding mutually beneficial solutions? It's a very important question for us to come up with. And O-sensei developed, discovered, created, practiced, explored, and then shared with the world a way that we can actually study this and practice this together. What exactly would that look like? How do we turn something that's a conflict into a harmonious interaction? There are a lot of different ways that that can happen. 
One such example <coughs> is that Osites they believe that if we stop seeing each other as different or separate, but saw one another as connected, that we might create one family of humanity, as opposed to a bunch of different warring factions. So this is the goal, and it's still a question as to how to get there. And while we're getting there, we're at the same time developing physically, intellectually for mental focus, emotionally for resilience, and learning things like conflict resolution, anger management, emotional intelligence, and leadership. Indisputable critical success factors for youth in the 21st century. We know that we need to know math, and we need to know science, and we know that we need to read and write, and yet we also know that if we don't have healthy bodies, and the ability to focus our minds, and the ability to get along with one another, and work cooperatively in small groups, then it's going to be very difficult for us to manifest our dreams. TEDx Youth is all about empowering young people. And so, this is what we aim to do. So that young people can go on and create the visions and the things that they want to make out of their lives. Again, thank you, Mr. Colton, for all this arm waving. What's it going to look like? Well, in one case, at least, we had a school. Where are you? Here you are. Please come up. So some students from the Crystal Ray High School in Brooklyn, New York, they have a very interesting program in which four days out of the week, they're in a rigorous academic program. You can step on the mat. It's OK. Here. And then one day a week, they are working. And last summer, in order to help them get ready to go into the workplace, we had an Aikido program that was focused on the awareness and control of one's nonverbal communication, one's body language. But I'll let them tell you about what that experience is like. Please. Well, my experience at work is having a good posture, like being very presentable. If you're like very presentable, like you like the way how I'm standing up, the way I'm having joy eye contact, it helps you when you're at work. Because it also helps us an example, like when your other co-workers, and it helps you see that you're very motivated. By sitting up straight, standing up straight, and have good eye contact. With me, um, Aikido actually helps keep you calm. Like, if you feel angry or anything, you can do exactly what he was showing, the self-breathing and everything, stuff like that. It keeps you calm, helps you um, not get angry at all. It helps out, especially at work. Um, like, like she said, keeps you motivated, sit up straight. It shows positive attitude. Thank you both very much. So, thank you. So, okay, self-control, self-awareness. And then we enter into interactions with others. And there's the possibility that conflict can take place in such a situation. So, Aminata, where are you? Yeah. So, in Aikido, we study these principles. So, grab a hold of that person. The other hand, so that they can all see up there in Cyberland. So, in this particular exercise, Aminata is holding my wrist in place. She's not letting me move. And if I, she's giving me a problem. If I approach that problem with aggression, hold really strong. Or if I approach that problem by pretending it doesn't exist, it still doesn't go away. Or if I approach that problem by becoming fearful, maybe she just walks right over me. I become victim. So I don't want to become the aggressor, and I don't want to become the victim, and I don't want to ignore the problem. So in Aikido, the solution, rather than doing that, would be to relax myself, extend toward her as though I'm going to handshake a friend, and then move naturally. And you may think, come on, whatever. You can't do that. Besides, you're stronger than she is. But anybody can do this. Anybody can learn to do this. Regardless of age, size, race, gender, ethnicity, where you were born, what have you. So first, if I'm not to try to struggle, she's fighting the world. Oh, the world fights back. So rather than fighting the world, she just reaches forward and moves. <laughs> that was pretty rough. She can even do it more relaxed again. Yeah. Without breaking the contact, she becomes incredibly strong. Thank you very much. When you fight the world, the world fights.
that's you. And I can always practice changing that by changing ourselves. So in this instance, this quote here, often attributed to Mahatma Gandhi, be the change that you want to see in the world. So in this instance, Tess is going to grab a hold of Christine with the same metaphor that we were using before. And Christine just wants to sit down. And if she tries to force Tess, if she tries to make him go down to change the world, she runs into difficulty. So instead of that, an Aikido approach to this would be she changes herself. She relaxes her shoulder. She relaxes and makes herself peaceful inside. And then she can just sit down. She has become the change that she wants to see in the world. Instead of trying to force the world into a shape, she changes herself and thereby affects change in the world. Thank you both very much. In another instance, Tiffany, are you here? Please. In another instance, we have a situation where people are trying to stop things from happening in the world, to armor plate ourselves against potential danger. So if I were to come with this practice knife toward Tiffany and she tried to armor plate herself against the world, not a very good strategy. So rather than armor plating against the world, she stays relaxed, she extends her spirit, and she moves naturally. Stepping toward and into the solution instead of avoiding the problem. So in Aikido, we begin slowly. She learns how to stay relaxed. And then we increase the intensity so that she learns to deal with ever-increasing stressful situations while still staying relaxed. Maybe we even hand it up a bit. <laughs> more and more able to stay relaxed in these situations. <laughs> Zach, are you here? So in another situation about anger, how many people here think anger makes you strong? Very enlightened group, not so many. <laughs> so in this particular exercise to illustrate this point, Zach is going to take a good strong stance. Here, why don't you go the other way so Cyberland can see us. All right. So in this instance, now Zach is strong, and he's just going to get stronger. So, now Zach, I want you to think about something that makes you really angry. You got it? Really focus on it. He actually became weaker. So now I want you to think about something that you really love, something that makes you feel good. session later, bring a program to your school, come and check it out, feel for yourself whether or not this actually makes a difference. If it does, it has profound implications for how we move through the world, how we live together, how we solve problems, and how we can turn conflict into harmony. And there's one more thing. When it gets moving like that, like we were doing before, it's a lot of fun too. <laughs> Thank you all very much. <laughs>